That's right, friends. I told you what was going to happen in Acolyte Episode 5. I told you it would get good. I mean, did it, though? Let's take a look. All right, so I'm not going to just call myself a genius for knowing what was going to happen to the Acolyte, right? Uh, heavy spoilers for Acolyte Episode 5. And if you didn't catch my previous video where I said Acolyte was going to get good, again, all right, I'm going to try real hard to explain what sarcasm is to people. But the best thing, it, it it's a train wreck that you cannot stop looking at. There are thousands of people who have just died in front of you, and you're watching them as they moan and cry and scream, and you're still watching it because you cannot turn away. And that's what The Acolyte is. Remember, The Acolyte is written and showrun by Leslie Headland, the former chief executive officer for Harvey Weinstein, you know, his personal assistant, the person who set the appointments for girls to be molested by a convicted offender and nothing has happened to her. I don't, allegedly, I don't, I don't know how I can stress this any further. But let's just take the show on its merits on its own. There was the kernel of good show in here, and episode five kind of proves it, but the writing is so atrociously bad. Characters flip on a, like, motivations from characters flip on a dime. There's some of the dumbest choreography I've ever seen. They literally wanted to compare the lightsaber scenes in this to A New Hope. Not A New Hope, I'm sorry. To to the lightsaber scene from um, the first prequel, where it's Obi-Wan Kenobi and Qui-Gon, and they're fighting... And they play that epic music. First of all, there's no epic music in any of this. Like, the people that they hired for, like, Boba... Not just Boba Fett. Like, I don't really... The Boba Fett song's fine. But, like, The Mandalorian, there's none of that to be found. None of the really great songwriters are in any of... Or, like, you know, soundtrack writers, whatever. Musicians, people who write sound music things. Yes. They're not there. There's, there's not a lot going on here. But... The backlash, I, just all of it is just insanity. Uh, but I will say, on some level, I enjoyed this episode. And because I like flashy lightsaber things to go on, you know? And I'm not just shilling for the thing. The writing is absolutely so stupid and so dreadful. But guess what? The stakes were raised. And I want to make a point about this. Again, heavy spoilers for the Accolade Episode 5. Everybody dies, except for, like, three major characters. Let's say four major characters. Remember the super diverse Jedi cast that we got with all those super awesome diverse Jedis and the, the little lesbian girl and, and Yorg, the protector? Dead. I kept waiting. I'm, I'm still waiting. They might still get up. They might rise from the dead. I don't know. But I was like, oh, my God. They just killed all the gay people. <laughs> they killed all the diverse actors. What are they doing? This is crazy. It was a bloodbath. There's not been this many dead Jedi since Order 66, which was kind of, frankly, exciting. And it would have been more exciting if all of it wasn't in the dark. I am a little tired of all of this filming in the dark. There was one really good scene where Master Squid Game... Had his blue lightsaber, and the and and I like how the, it, the lightsabers now are in shot effects, so they're lit up now. So it lights their faces and it lights their eyes. Don't get me wrong, I thought that was a cool shot, but the show is just so dumb. There, there's literally in the beginning, uh, beginning part. First of all, Osha has been thrown across the room. Right? Apparently, she was thrown so far away she can't even see anything. That's not what happened, but, you know, they don't know where any time or space or where anything is. She's literally thrown 30 feet away from everybody else. She was not thrown to the moon. So when she gets up, you would you hear all of this, like, this lightsaber interaction and all this, like, you know, you know a lightsaber battle's going on. Yet, and, and, and then instead of, like, having her, like, panic and be, because you can see the concern in her face. Literally, they 
they do a hard cut, which would have been really great, but because Leslie Headland and the rest of her directors are terrible, they let her walk for like another 20 seconds and completely defeat any point to having that set up. And it, it just it doesn't make any sense. So there, there's not much to the plot here. Uh, a bunch of Jedi start fighting, and the Sith Lord is just kind of annihilating everybody, kicking everybody's butts. There's some interesting lore stuff that I didn't even know about. Apparently, his his uh, his wrist gauntlets, his their wrist gauntlets, and their helmet are made of a, a metal that short circuits lightsabers. I didn't even understand what was going on. I just saw them breaking, and I was like, "What in the world is going on?" This. If you don't know anything about like the High Republic or anything else, you just be like, "Why? Why is any of that?" They don't explain anything. You're just supposed to know it. Okay, fine, whatever. I oh, I've only watched the movies and the freaking shows that you put out, and I've never seen this happen before. While I think it's interesting, I, I don't really get it. You know, where did it come from? I don't know. So anyway, he's like breaking these things, and and it's kind of interesting, and I I kind of dig what's going on there. And he, I keep saying he, I keep misgendering them. I'm I'm very sorry for that, people. <laughs> so here's what I was really afraid of. So I'm I'm watching them fight this guy, and clearly they're going to do the unmasking. And I keep thinking, I was like, look, I called this in my last video that. It was definitely going to be the only character it could possibly be, which is the dude who helped Osha, not Osha, who helped May in the previous episodes, who helped concoct the poison, who helped concoct all the other things. And I, I was like, it's I mean, it's that guy. I already projected it. I said this is who it's going to be. And Leslie Headland herself said, I'm not trying to make it too hard so that people can't figure it out. But in the back of my mind, I kept thinking like, Oh my God, what if it's like Osha and May's mom? Her, their biological mom, because she was real mean and real angry, and she was the same race of alien as, um, you know, Darth uh, Maul. And I was like, oh my God, they couldn't possibly. But I kept seeing the dude's guns, his arms, and I'm like, bro went to the gun show. And I couldn't believe it was really funny, because I'm like, he does even make fun at one point, which I thought was good. And he's like, May, how did you not know I was your master? Like, is it because he's like, Hey, May, how did you not know I was your master? And then he's like, Yeah, because I'm a bird. Arse. And, and he because I kept seeing his arms. And I was like, Oh my God, it, that has to be a dude. But then I started thinking, like, Oh my God, I've seen Black Widow. They put a woman's head, they CGI'd a woman's head on top of a man's body. That's what's going to happen here. And then I was like, okay, wait a second. It's, it's not what's going to happen. So anyway, it turns out to be whatever that guy's name is. I like that guy. The only thing I don't like about his station in life and what's going on is the fact that he's very young. And he's like, all I want is an acolyte. But he doesn't explain why. It's like, I want someone to share my power with. You know, I want freedom across the game. I mean, I could understand where his argument is. They just didn't make any sound thing for it. So anyway, he goes through. He kills Yorg. Crazy. He breaks Yorg's neck. And then I absolutely thought um, Master, you know, Master Squid Games Pad Padawan. First of all, there's a part where she's trying to arrest May. And she's like reading May the Miranda rights. It's like, what are you doing? Just arrest her. Pull out your lightsaber and cut her arm off. Do something, please. So anyway, um, when she starts fighting him and he he gets his like lightsaber dagger and just goes, hush, hush, hush. he hit her three times. It's like he got a call from the people who did Ahsoka and they were like, look, if you stab someone once with a lightsaber, not going to kill them. You got to stab them at least three times. Although... There were Jedi, and I just, I don't know. I thought this was stupid. Maybe other people thought it was cool. Where the Sith Lord, he impales the one Jedi and then pulls the other one on the same lightsaber at the same time and gets two for one. I just thought that was so cheesy. Um, maybe you enjoyed it, but I, I thought it was cheesy. Anyway, I really, I, I, I liked this episode. Other than, I, It was so dumb. Osha puts a light on his back, and at least there was a setup and payoff from the stupid bugs, and the bugs fly away, and I was like, there's no way this guy's dead, and of course he wasn't. And then, of course, they have the twin swap, and it's like, 
so stupid. Be- Here's the the fundamental problem with the writing is they will say something and they will immediately contradict it within the same episode, if not the same scene. And it's so dumb. Writing is so bad. It's unfathomable. These people don't know how to read or write a script. So Sith Lord goes, uh, uh, um, Master Squid Game goes, take, why don't you take off your helmet? And he goes, oh, why? So you could read my mind? Because we've already seen in the show that he could read people's minds, right? So he takes off the helmet, whatever, and gets exposed, whatever. Well, later, uh, May trades places with Osha, and, you know, Master Squid Game can't read her mind and see that that's obviously not Osha, and her the tips of her hair aren't burnt by lightsaber. It's just such bad writing. It's unbelievable. But let's go to the articles. I feel like I've ranted too long. Let's Let's actually look at some articles here. Because I just want to point out a couple things real quick. Uh, The Masters reveal shocking death made for the best episode ever. This is from Forbes, right? Uh, I've been somewhat mixed on the Acolyte. It's not good. But it's so bad, I am, in fact, enjoying it. And um, I will still make the argument every day of the week that it's better than the Vespa scooter thing. And it's better, you know, better than the Book of Boba Fett, which only, you know, two of the episodes of Book of Boba Fett had nothing to do with Boba Fett. And it's it's better than Ahsoka. Like, Ahsoka was just so, so bad. God damn. And Obi-Wan pissed me off, too. I mean, Ahsoka was just boring. It wasn't even... It was terribly written, but... Anyway, uh, it's just one giant uh, lightsaber fight. Um, the Phantom Menace Daphne Keen, aka X23 from Logan. Which girl is that? Is she the Padawan? Is that? Did I not notice that? I hate that girl's makeup so much that I cannot even get past it. It's just so terrible. I don't. I can't even understand. But I mean, he's. It was just crazy. Like you killed all of the diverse actors. Like what are you doing? I. I was stunned. Could not believe any of that. Um. It's very bizarre. Very bizarre. So, th- this was an incredible episode. And, and in this fact, even Critical Drinker and many of the other people out there said that this was the least bad episode, which I 100% agree with. This actually, I, I, honest to God, this made it worth it because it's so stupid yet so crazy. And I really like the Sith Lord guy. I think he's cool and I like... Master Squid Game, and I like the fact that they kill off all of the annoying characters, except for Main Ocean, and definitely one of them has to die, so I'm okay with all of this, right? This is where it gets a little over the top, right? This is Screen Rant. Can you please shill any harder, Thomas Bacon? Like, you're, you're doing Francis Bacon a disservice by writing this article. The Acolyte Episode 5 makes the review bombing and backlash look so much worse. Really? And they're like, the accolade seems exaggerated with a 13% Rotten Tomato score. Episode 5 features a stunning lightsaber combat, skilled cinematography, debunking criticism. May and Osha's fight is the dumbest thing. It's literally lame. It's just so dumb. I cannot even... It's It's ridiculous. And there's been so much review bombing from... From death threats to Wikipedia editors. And there's a lot of people who are mad about Key Addy Mundy's age. I don't I don't care about that at all. I don't even remember. I, like, it doesn't matter. And they're like, the dude made a cameo that contradicts a quote-unquote non-canon 1999 CD-ROM of a non-canon 2013 trading card. Could care less. None of that mattered to me. It, it was just like, like they said, they couldn't afford Yoda, so they put in this. But the writing in and of itself is dumb. It's bad. It's just unintuitive. It's ridiculous. Yeah, I think the review bombing's been a a little bad for sure. And they're like, for the record, I don't think The Accolade is the best TV show ever made. But it's better than the holiday special. The holiday special is just incredibly boring. Um, And they're saying, they're, they're like... 
all of these these reviews are from AI. Like, come on, people. It's just not it's not good. But it's so bad, I'm kind of interested. It's not beautifully shot. He says, right, episode five is beautifully shot. The lighting is all in the dark. I cannot see anything that's going on, and you cannot compare of the compare to the Duel of the Fates because the Duel of the Fates is all shot in the light, and it has moments of like contemplation. And you can I okay. Here's what you have to do: describe to me what happened in this fight. Just describe it to me because I can describe Duel of the Fates, and I haven't seen that in like ten years, right? It's Obi Wan Kenobi. And uh, Darth Maul and Qui-Gon Jinn, and there's a fight, right? And Obi-Wan Kenobi is rash, and he races to go fight Darth Maul, but he's outclassed. And, um, you know, but he has to keep, there's like the doors, there's these crazy doors that keep opening and closing, and they keep getting to fight, but then they step through other doors, and, you know, Qui-Gon, or maybe Qui-Gon gets ahead, and, and he keeps, he's meditating, he's trying to put himself at ease. There's things that happen that I can describe. In this, there's a bunch of f swinging lightsabers around, and things happen, and sometimes people's lightsabers black out, and I, I don't know what's going on. It's just crazy. It's all over the place. It's not well shot. It's not, it's none of this is here. It, like, here's some of the comments. One decent episode does not invalidate how bad the series is. Even the Book of Boba Fett had good episodes, and that series was trash. Agreed. Agreed. You know, and and, and again, they're, they're just terrible mystery reveals. They're just not good. None of it, none of it really, it, none of it lands. But there's a kernel of something good here, and... I like the train wreck. I like to see sweat ice, sweaty Sith Lord fight a bunch of loser Jedi. I'm okay. I'm going to root for him at this point because I hate Osha. I hate May. And I really like Master Squid Game, but I think he did something really bad. And maybe he turns into, uh, for all I know, he becomes Emperor Palpatine and gets a face swap. I don't know. That's as far as what I can guess is what's going on. Thank you for listening to me rant through all this. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Are you ready for the gun show from the Sith Lord? Are you into it? Did you hate this? Did you like it? I know I covered quite a bit here, and I was kind of ranting, but let me know what you think, because I always engage. I answer every single question. I respond to every comment. Even the people who only watch five seconds and don't understand what sarcasm is. I respond to you, too. I hear you. I understand. If you'd like... Like and subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. Definitely helps the channel. We also have a live show where you can come hang out with us. It's Friday night, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's a good time. Hand by all. You can also catch that on iTunes. Great place. Same with Rumble. Come join us. You can have a good time. We review a lot of stuff. We go over some fun news. Do some other great stuff. Sometimes we have giveaways. Anyway, I really appreciate you listening. I'm using the force. These are not... The droids you've been thinking of. Oh, yeah, by the way, uh, Osha lost her little droid guy. But I think they saved him, so it's okay. You know, her pocket droid. That's for you to think about for the rest of this. Think about Osha's pocket droid and think about whether or not you think that's good writing. Anyway, love all y'all. Thank you for listening. But I'm on to the next one.